Hey, welcome to Horsley Retirement Adventures. Today I'm going to, I'm not gonna needlepoint, that's my wife's stuff. I'm not needlepoint, well, maybe later, but not right now. C10 units off of Suzuki uh, gauge, gauges. Um, there's a form for it and there's a reason why because it's always acting up. I've had this Suzuki C10 gauge on my boat now for three years, well, ever since I've had it. I've had problems with it for two years, going off, on, off, on. Um, I ran out of gas one time because the fuel thing wasn't working. It said I had three quarters of a tank, I had no gas left. So I'm, I mean, I'm not impressed with this thing at all. It goes, it gets hooked up to the NEMA 2000 um, frame of your boat for all your electronics. And that's what this does, that plugs into it. Now mine came like this. This had a, so evidently it's all taped together. That plugs into the NEMA frame, the NEMA 2000 frame, and then it gets, then it goes all the way down to the back of the boat and hooked up to your engine. The thing is, you can't work on these things no matter what. So what I did, it's going to be, it was six hundred dollars, six hundred fifty to seven hundred dollars for a new gauge, C10 gauge, and every time I would wiggle this on the back of the. On the back of that, I'd wiggle it, it'd go on, it'd go off, it'd go on, it would go off. And this thing screws in here. So as you're screwing in there, as it was screwed in, imagine these wires being twisted as it's screwed in. Because this little bitty connector right there plugs into a circuit board that tells you everything about your motor. So this little baby there, you can see that green stuff on there. So what I did is like, it's gonna cost me 700 bucks no matter what. I wanna see why it's not working. So I took my Dremel and I cut this all very gently all the way around. I'm assuming you could probably take it off of here, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to do that. And I didn't wanna break the ribbon or nothing. So I kind of opened it up this way. And in there, I found a connector and this is all your computer stuff inside your Suzuki C10 Junky K, or, uh, Junky piece of junk. Anyway, it's a little circuit board. So this plugs into it right in here. I'll show you how that goes in just a sec. Just one second. But you can see there's green stuff on this. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's green stuff on the pin right in there. And it's probably been like that for ever since I had it. And then, you know, that just plugs in just like this. So imagine if you screwed this in, see how that just keeps screw, just keeps turning? So whoever put this in after they put this in, after they, after they installed it, should have Loctite this so it wouldn't screw, go back and forth. Because this thing, screw, you know, if you try to screw it in or screw it out, it just twists the wires. So when that did that, I looked at that, I cleaned up my pins, I cleaned up the connector, and I also found the white wire, which is probably the voltage wire, to be broken right there. See that right there? So, with that being said, I'm going to try to fix that. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. But I think I'm going to try to clean this out. Clean the connector out, because there's green stuff in there as well. And then I want to try to rewire it. You know, try, I got to remember where these wires go. But this one's broken, so that's the reason why mine wasn't working. Could could be the whole reason why a lot of people's aren't working is because even though this is sealed, evidently moisture got inside here, and it and uh, the connector was all corroded. It had green corrosion all over the connector. So if your CT10 gauge is not working, or it goes off and on, off and on, it's probably because this connector is corroded. Now there is a company out there that will take this face off, I believe, and charge you like $350 to fix that connector or whatever's wrong with it, and then they'll send it right back to you. I didn't want to waste $350 because I just, yeah, I, for three years, I mean, I've been frustrated with this piece of junk. So I'm going to see if I can get it back to work because I've got my Lorentz hooked up and I want my Lawrence, Lawrence to uh, monitor my engine. If this doesn't work, I'm going to get an uh, adapter cable for my Lorance and uh, just adapt that to my Suzuki and uh, monitor my engine and all that stuff out of my Lorance. Okay, what I've done is I've 
cut the wire all the way through. This is always already done that anyway. I got a smidge of wire in the connector right here. And then I've got this wire there. The first thing you want to do is see, make sure that this wire is uh, is good all the way down to where it connects into the NEMA 2000. So I'm pretty sure that's the pin. I check it with my flute meter. It means it's good. I ohmed it out. So that's good. Okay, I got that little minute piece out. And what I did is I went to my wife's sewing machine area and I got me a Bobby R little sewing machine pin thing. And I cleaned out that connector where that old wire was. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right through there, see that pin moving back up and down? I got that all cleaned out. Then I got me some, I found me some wire, some real tiny 30 seconds wire. I did, I did uh, stick my thumb with a needle, but that's okay. So I got me some tiny, tiny wire, solid wire, which is good. You don't want stranded. And what I'm gonna do, maybe you guys wanna use that. I'm gonna try to get this wire through that baby. And when I do, there's a, con oh man, that really stung. I put a pin right in my thumb, probably all the way up to here. I'm not really sure, but man, it hurts. So anyway, I'm gonna get me a solid wire. And I'm gonna go right through this connector, right where I had that pin. And put it right through there and leave that strain of wire, that solid wire out and connect it to this white wire. And uh, I'll show you what that Okay, got the wire through the connector, the solid piece of wire right through there, and you can see it's just hanging out right at the connector. Once I connect these two pieces, I wanna intertwine those and um, put some electric tape on it. I don't have any heat shrink. So I'm gonna get these connected. Then I'm gonna pull this back a little bit and put a dot of crazy glue right on this connection right there. After I pull this back, you can see it, see where it's sticking out on the, on the copper end right there. I'm gonna pull that back to where the, it's supposed to be, and then right to here, put some great crazy glue on that, tie these together and uh, plug her back in. The rest of them look like they're pretty good. I don't know, what do you think my chances are? About 50, 50 or 10, 10, 90? We're gonna find out if it Okay, I made sure that this would actually, the pin would go in the connector in here, or the connector would go on those pins. I got my solid wire in this connector. And uh, I didn't show you a secret I used, but I slit, I cut this insulation in all the way down. And then you put your wire in the insulation with the other wire, and then I, I wrapped it up that way, it's a great cut. Now I'm gonna drop a piece of, a piece, a drop of Gorilla Glue, crazy glue, because I can't get in there and, and do that connection. So I'm gonna just drop a drop in there. Right there, and one over here. And make sure that's good. It's a big drop. And let, I blew I blew on this end instead of that end. So I'm gonna let that dry. And uh, make sure I didn't get it on anything else, any of the other connectors. Okay. I did not. Because it could be a uh, conductor of electricity as well. If you had it on both, it would short it out right away. So I got it on one, I'm gonna let it dry. And uh, I'll show you how I put it back together. The C10 unit, that's what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna get it back together, tape this all back up if it works, water seal it, put it back in, plug it in my NEMA. If it turns on, it works, I just saved myself $700. If not, all right, I'm outside. There's the hole where my C10 gauge goes. 
I got everything taped back together, put the connector together, drop this down and let's put it into the NEMA 2000. I'm not gonna put that on yet, but I'll show you what I do. I mean, I'll show you how to take it off. There's screws right here. And then there's this little clip that goes over top of that. See, to take off a C10 unit, you take this off and there's four screws. I'm not screwing it in quite yet. But I'm gonna see if it's gonna work. I'll plug it in. I'll show you what the NEMA 2000 looks like. Everybody that's got a C10 gauge probably knows. Right here is your NEMA 2000. That's where everything plugs into. And um, I don't think I have my power plugged in there yet. Here's the gauge I just put in. I'm gonna plug that in right over here. And there's a slot you got to turn it to let there it goes and then you can tighten her down and this one here is the power for the c10 it goes into the circuit board right here it's got a three amp fuse and uh, that goes right into here i mean actually i mean ideally you want to have your power kind of like in the middle of your NEMA 2000 so I'm going to take this one out and put that one here and then put the power one in this one here that way you have any if you have any kind of voltage drop issues uh, you probably won't have any to tell you the truth but you want to have it if you got one that's got one two three four five six connectors you want it in third one in you want to have your power on uh, this one here the third one in is capped off for some reason so I'm going to take this one off put the power in and switch this one over here this is my engine one uh, which is this right here made in Mexico hmm okay oh that one's my this is actually my field fuel tank sensor that's what this one is so it doesn't matter what I said I'm gonna put that one here put my power there more to come okay I plugged it into another part of the NEMA 2000 it came on so that's something good that's something different um, when it comes on, it always says this. Do you haven't add any fuel? I'm going to say no. But I, if you, as you can see, nothing's reading at all. So I wonder if, if I turn my key on, if it's going to read anything. But it doesn't. This is what it did anyway before I even... That's weird. Now my motor's not even running. Oh. <sighs> okay, so it doesn't doesn't read anything. Go to my settings. If I have to go down to systems, network. Let's see if I got a device listed. C10 gauge is there configure see what happens if it does see if it does configure I don't know how long that takes I think it's they said it only takes a minute or a second to configure okay I don't have I got zero zero there it says Lorentz C10 gauge Software 1.150, oh, da da da. Model number's not there. Address not there. That number's there. Instances it's, it's, it says status is okay. I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I ain't got nothing yet. Okay, no status on that yet. So I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I hate to take that apart and look at my other wires. But you know what? My other wires could have been just as corroded as the power wire. Dang, I don't want to do that. All right, more to come. These C10 gauges are uh, really, they're junk. Don't buy a, C or a Suzuki as a C10 gauge. That's what I'm telling you right now. I'm going to still work on that gauge. If I can get it to work, I'll let you all know. But, uh. I mean, it's going through everything. Um, I even tried the 
I think I can even do the insulation on it. Gauge limits. Okay, all that's, I mean, that's the way it was when I got it from the, fa or when I first had it. Engine dipl display, center engine. Set up. Number of tanks, 60 gallons, all that stuff's in there. Um, yeah, that's about all I can think of. Pop-ups, I don't know what the heck that is. Engine trim, that should be, I mean, I want that on there. Okay, files. Got nothing there. All right, well, more to come. Pull out.